Well, good morning all gamers. Uh, my name is Waddles. That was an ironic use of the word gamers. Welcome to Villager Guide, the episode 4. There is now a Villager Guide playlist. If you missed an episode, you're in luck. Tap on that eye in the top corner and watch whatever you missed. Today's episode should be a short and simple one. We'll be going over villager breeding and iron golem spawning. These are two unique villager mechanics that I thought would fit well together because one can be used to cause the other in a way. I'd like to put a big little disclaimer right here. We won't be going over specific farms or how to build a villager breeder in this video. The plan for today to keep things short and simple is talk about the mechanics. You can then use the information that I give you to design your own farm or you can go check out some of my other tutorials like my villager breeder tutorial. So like, subscribe, notification bells on, all the other good things, and let's go. If the correct conditions are met, villagers can spawn iron golems. This mechanic can be used to create iron farms. Villagers will spawn iron golems when they are panicking. Now for villagers to spawn iron golems, uh, there are some conditions that will need to be met. Those conditions? Well, they're all laid out right here. Condition 1. Panicking. Villagers will begin to panic if they see the same zombie as three other villagers within 10 blocks of them. So that would mean uh, something kind of like this. Uh, these villagers are now panicking, they're freaking out, they see this zombie right here, and uh, bad things are, are happening, or, or so they think. Now, if there were to be an iron golem within 16 blocks of these villagers, the panicking stuff would not happen. So that means if you're looking for an iron golem to spawn, get rid of any golems that are near villagers. But panicking alone will not trigger the spawning of iron golems. Villagers will also need to have worked and slept. So you will need a day-night cycle and villager cycles in your world. This setup over here would not work because there are no beds and these villagers would not be able to sleep. There is a cat cap in villages as well. An iron farm is also going to be a cat farm. Cats will spawn in villagers. The cat cap is 10 cats per village. If this cat cap is met, no iron golems will spawn. So completely different mobs, but cats will stop the spawning of iron golems. You must pay attention to the cats nearby. Unfortunately, uh, you'll have to take out um, any cats nearby if there is an abundance of them if you're looking for iron golems. And last but not least, you will need some space for the iron golem to spawn. You'll need at least three open blocks above a solid surface. The solid surface should not be slabs. So if your villagers are panicking, they have worked and slept, there are not too many cats around, and there is open area for an iron golem to spawn, an iron golem may spawn. That's pretty much the breakdown of iron golem spawning in 1.14+. Plus, if you play on better Edition, I'm sorry, but the mechanics are very different. Now, moving on to villager breeding. Villager breeding is actually very, very useful. If you're looking to get a collection of villagers for maybe your villager trading hall or a collection of villagers for some sort of iron farm, well, you'll need to know about villager breeding. And if you've never dealt with this stuff before 1.14, well, you're in luck because, in my opinion, villager breeding got a whole lot easier in Minecraft 1.14. And to be clear, this video does include the updated 1.14.3 plus villager breeding mechanics. Now, for our villager to breed, there are some conditions. Uh, the conditions, again, in this chest. Villagers will need to be willing. To make them willing, you can either give them three bread or 12 carrots, potatoes, or beetroot, so one of these, or you can trade with a villager. After either throwing the villager some food, which that villager should pick up and put into its invisible inventory slot, we talked about that before, or after trading, your villager is willing. But there's a small catch. Uh, you can't really tell if the villager is willing or not. Um, the villager will just have picked up the food, so you'll need to keep track of who you traded with or who you gave food. The only other big thing that you'll need to have secured and ready to go uh, if you want your villagers to breed is some beds. Villagers will only breed if there is an additional bed. So let's imagine we have villager one and uh, villager two over here. They both have lots of food. Um, yep, there we go. Uh, and then we have two beds. These villagers would actually not breed. Their love hearts will show up, but we need an additional bed in this area for the villagers to actually breed. Once these hearts start showing up, one of two things will happen. Either you'll get a baby, or uh, you'll get some angry, frustrated signs. Those things, those uh, mean something is wrong. 
It seems that 9 out of 10 times that frustration symbol comes from not having enough beds, which is, I'm sure, my case. I have a million villagers over there and they have probably claimed some of the beds. <laughs> You'd be surprised about how far villagers can claim beds as their own. A villager can claim a bed that is very, very far away. But yes, about villager breeding, all you need is some food or some trade action to have happened and then at least three beds. That's it. It's actually really, really easy to do. After your villagers have successfully bred, you will need to give them some more food or trade with them again to make them willing again. They will not stay willing forever. You'll also probably want to move the new baby villager out of the area because that baby is now claiming your third bed. And as long as that third bed is claimed, there will be no more baby villagers created. If you've seen my villager breeder tutorial, now you might recognize this thing right here. This is what a 1.14 villager breeder looks like. This one, however, has a few issues ever since 1.14.3 released. I do have a fix, so keep your eyes out for that tutorial soon. Uh, but I think with that, that pretty much sums up Iron Golem mechanics and villager breeding. If you happen to have any questions, slide over to my subreddit r slash waddles and drop your questions over there. Join the Danger Chat Discord server, that's linked down in the description below. Tons of action going on there, always. Drop a follow, Twitter, Instagram, like, subscribe, all of the things. My name is Waddles, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Villager Guide series. Thank you very much for watching, I will see you next time. Goodbye, everyone.